Right, let's go back now and look at reading um, a file again. Um, so I want, I'm going to start where we left off with the last screencast, but I'm not going to bother, I don't want to output data to a file anymore, so I'm going to remove all that. But I still am going to output data points to the screen to check that they're read correctly. And what I'm going to do this time is we're going to pretend that we've got an input file that doesn't look like the form we've been used to with this white space between the fields but it looks more like the sort of file we just wrote out, a comma separated value file. So read data from a comma separated value file and store them in a 2D vector. OK, we'll keep that the same. Um, and the file, let's call it test input.txt, looks like two fields of numbers separated by commas. OK. So um, I'm not going to need that anymore, so I can take that away. But I, uh, I will need the other things. Um, I'm still going to keep the structure the same for holding the, the data. But I'm going to change this now to the new file name, test input. So test input just looks like this. Um, file is open, successful for reading, OK. Um, so this method is the simplest, where you just use the extraction operator to dump the read in data into um, variables that you've declared here. But that's not going to work with this input file because the data is not separated by white space, it's separated by commas. Um, and I want to show you how to deal with that. Now if you, if you Google for reading a CSV file in C++, you'll find lots of very elegant methods for doing that. Um, but we don't know enough about C++ um, at the moment to be able to get our heads around them. However, I think we do know enough about programming to to sort of improvise a method for reading in the, or to create our own method for reading in these numbers from a CSV file. Um, and that relies on the fact that we've used the string class and we know some of the methods that we can call on on string. So let's include string so we can use that and what we're going to do is we're going to read the file in line by line um, and then process each line so that we end up with the data in these uh, vectors just as before okay um, so what we're going to need to read a line is we're going to need a string let's call it our line this will hold the red in line And then we're going to use the function getLine, which, imaginatively enough, gets the line from the file. So we know the file is my file, and we want to put it in the variable our line. Reads line from file into our line. Okay. Um, and now we understand something because we created the input file. We know something about the structure of the input file. We know that it's two fields separated by a comma. So if I could, if I knew the position of the comma, I could split up the string based on its position. All right. So um, let's do that. So let's split up the string, split up the string, our line, based on where the comma is. All right. So to find the um, comma position, so let's call that comma pause. We have to declare that. So comma pos equals align dot find. So find is the method that finds something within a string. Find um, where the comma is, <coughs> starting from the beginning. So that's what the zero means. Zero tells it whereabouts in the string to start. So it will start at the beginning of our line, and it will return an int, which is the position of the first occurrence of a comma. So now if I use, um, now if I split up the string based on the position of that comma, I will have, I can have two strings, one which is the x value and one which is the y value. So let's also create um, some temporary variables.
So these these will contain the strings <coughs> of the x value and the, the y value. So x string will be align substring um, and then uh, here you need to put the position where you want to start so that's zero and the length so that will be comma pause so this extracts the x value as a string from a line and you can do the same thing for the y string so now you put the start position so I think you want to start at the one position after where the comma is and then now you want to go to the end of the string so that's the end of the string you can get from string length and then but the end the, the end of the string you just want the length from comma pause plus one so it needs to be minus comma pause plus one or minus comma pause minus one <coughs> so there's a bit of thinking to get to that but hopefully that should be right um, substring it's the start position and then the length from that position alright so now xst should hold a string with the x value and yst should hold a string for the y value um, and to make the connection so this obviously this goes away now to make the connection to these double variables xt and yt like we had before you can't just set xt equal to xst you can't do that because these are not the same type uh, double can't equal a string So if you try to build that, that will fail. So what you need to do is you need to convert the string XST into a double and then you can do that. So the way to do that is to first of all make the C string version of this string. So C underscore STR is one of the member functions from the string class. So that gives you the C string version. It's still a red line because it still doesn't equal a double. But now you can use a function called a to f, which takes a character string or a c string and create to converts it into a double. Okay, so convert string into a double. All right, so that will work, and you can do exactly the same thing with the y string version. All right, and everything else should be should work just the same. So once we've got here, we've got two doubles, x t and y t. Push them back onto this vector, then push that vector back onto the vector of vectors. So this should build, and it should write out just the same as as before. But now behind the scenes, it's a lot different. You've read in this file line by line, and um, processed each line so by knowing ourselves what the structure of the file was we can process the string that we read in with get line into these double variables and then do what we want with them and so you can Im you can imagine that if you had multi format data then this would be maybe a quite useful way of reading that in so let's say you took the gbplaces.csv file that we had um, in the, when we were doing in the MATLAB part of the course, so in, in week four and five. Um, this this sort of method you could read in that file, and obviously you'd have string for the place name, or you'd have uh, an integer for the population, and so on. <coughs> 